Hello everybody, this is Dr. Farhan Zameed from Biotechnica Bangalore. So for this video, what we will try to do is we will see what exactly the COVID pandemic has left over after the after its boom and then we will also see how exactly the role of bioinformatics you know what what is the importance of bioinformatics especially during that pandemic and after post pandemic so you know this implications of bioinformatics onto covid and during the pandemic could be studied and we will see how best bioinformatics has actually evolved in deciphering the covid-19 pandemic so let's dive in Welcome back. So as I gave you in the background of the of the video, so for today's video, we will talk about the role played by bioinformatics in COVID-19 pandemic and especially with the vaccine discovery and synthesis. So let's try to understand the basics first. Now, when we started with COVID-19 and you remember when everything was shut down, okay, we were all sitting in our one room, many a times not talking to each other also. And, uh, you know, the highest amount of the, you know, the value of life was understood in those two or three months, especially with the first lockdown. And when everybody were, as a layman, when everybody were in a particular room, okay, not talking to each other, people in bioinformatics took the advantage of it of not just sitting in a particular room but going back into the laboratory and understanding what exactly is this COVID-19. So understanding this virus actually helped us in designing a beautiful vaccine uh, with various brand names like you know Covaxin, Covishield, um, Moderna. Okay so all this has come up and but however um, people now we are you know out of this pandemic but with this what we want to know is what was the role of bioinformatics. So there was a lot of sequencing of data which took with, with, that, with uh, the, the virus. And just to tell you, uh, COVID-19 was not the first time wherein if you, if you look into certain books from the medical field, so you see that COVID-19 virus has been already mentioned 20 years back. Okay, but on the other way, we did not have an idea that it can create a huge evoke like this. So let us try to see what did we do. So when I look into the COVID-19 disease map, we started with the virus entry because once we understood the virus, people, everybody wanted to know how exactly it is invading a given system. So people were interested or all the scientists were interested in understanding the virus entry. So once we understood the virus entry, we also looked upon something which is called a cytokine storm, the entire immunological reactions which is happening in my system. And once we understood about this, people were also interested in looking into the inflammatory component of it. And this inflammation also also led into some secondary complications such as fibrosis, apoptosis and then this can also lead into a lot of variation in your immune response especially at the innate immune response and people were also looking at various kinds of MAP kinase pathway that is mitogen associated protein kinase pathway and this was also leading into various kinds of ER stress that is estrogen stress and finally people were also interested in knowing how exactly autophagy has been affected because of this virus. So the entire disease map was being deciphered in the first six months and because of that now we are all here uh, as survivors of COVID-19. Now Moving at forward, so, you know, what was the role of bioinformatics? So, you know, everybody, when we start a particular research, there are three major platforms. One is the in silico platform, the other one is in vitro platform, and the other one is, you know, that last you have the in vivo platform. So, with the in vitro and in vivo, there's a lot of time consumption, labor, and many a times at the end, you know that the experiments are not working. So, what people started was they started using in silico platforms to decipher COVID-19. And here comes the beautiful application of bioinformatics in understanding the infectious diseases, not just, you know, COVID-19, but however, this was much more helpful in understanding Ebola, influenza, then, you know, uh, uh, the rhinovirus, then you have even the polio virus was best understood using bioinformatics. Then with this, 
once I have the genetic material, I also wanted to know what are the various tools, what are the analytical tools and methodologies which could be implicated so that I understand these viruses in a much better way. And hence, there are a lot of institutes which actually joined hands in, in collaborative mode, which were able to come up with many, many computational tools which helped us in understanding this virus in a much better way. So, the entire you know myth of the story started saying that okay maybe this coronavirus has come from bats because you know people started eating fruits and then maybe from you know the bat from the gut of the bat you know you have this particular virus which has come out and people started analyzing the stool samples of bats and then you know and then you know the patient uh, sequences were also being taken up and they were trying to match with the viruses from the fecal samples of the bat to the human system and then see what exactly is the similarity whether it is the same virus but as you know these viruses when we looked into across population and what we know is you know many a times there was some similarity and many a times there was a lot of dissimilarity and this dissimilarity was because the virus was also intelligent and with this intelligence you know it was always evolving so for the evolution of the virus we were you know there were majorly there were four major com components which has led into the evolution of the virus the first component what we would talk about is the spike variation so we call it as spike mutation the spike proteins were always get were always getting mutated and because of this mutation we were not able to know or we were not able to capture a particular virus at a particular time because of the continuous mutation now apart from just the spike protein mutation we also had membrane protein mutations then there was something which is called as enveloped mutations and then you have the nuclear capsid which was also undergoing mutation so all these mutations led into the development of you know new variants and you know all the crazy names which was been you know nomenclated for understanding these new strains of uh, you know uh, uh, covid-19 virus now with this there was a great revolution in bringing up the therapeutic value, therapeutic targets with a computational approach and here comes the drug development for COVID-19. Now, once we have understood the SARS COVID virus, people started to analyze the spike proteins. They also started analyzing various polymerases, then especially helicases and proteases. I want to you know, seek your attention at this point of time. If you go on to PubMed and look into the curvature of the number of research articles which have been published from 2019 to 2022, you can see a skyrocketing level of publications which have gone up. So this was mainly contributed by 80% was by mainly by in the on the basis of bioinformatics. So people started analyzing this. Uh, wherein high throughput uh, viral sequencing was being done to understand the shape based screening was being done and then fragment based drug designing was being done and then structure based drug designing was performed target based pharmaco um, for modeling was being done and drug repurposing was been also been done drug repurposing is you know you already have a drug for something else and people thought can I use the same drug for COVID-19 as an antiviral drug people tried into this and very importantly we, since India comes from a very traditional mode of medicine okay we we went back into ayurveda we looked into how exactly ayurveda yunani that is in total it is ayush how ayush can actually help us in understanding or decipher this particular big problem of covid 19 and we we started analyzing natural compounds from the nature so that we have at least some cure for for this particular deadly virus now with that People started experimenting with small groups because again, I cannot de design a particular drug or a vaccine and just give it very blindly. So there were very quick clinical trials which were being done and many times these clinical trials also led into a lot of failures, but there were few drugs, there were few vaccines which were being developed and this was been actually looked into smaller group uh, cohort patients wherein COVID-19 non-critical patients were ev ev evaluated, COVID-19 critical patients were evaluated and non covid healthy patients were actually evaluated their exome uh, isolations were been done protein digestion extracts were prepared they were analyzed with high end machines such as lcms and then the data was again analyzed using bioinformatics various tools were analyzed and with this particular tool people got to know that biomarker validation could be done so once they did this biomarker validation they saw how best we can actually hamper the process of this viral replication in a system so that we can actually save life so with this 
people started having various kinds of approaches and the best approach which was been designed was the proteomics and the multi-omic approach wherein people thought doing one kind of research having one kind of a thought is not just sufficient because the problem itself is multifaceted so with this multi-dimensional thing people thought again we will try to you know decipher this using multi-omic approach research and with this there comes various kinds of branches coming together beautifully to 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 find a cure for this particular virus and the first thing started with the next generation sequencing was NGS sequencing was the best platform to understand the entire viral variomics and then this is how we were able to know how exactly the mutation and the variants are actually been surviving. The next one was to validate this. I use this as a, a diagnostic tool, even for diagnosis of the for, for the for the patient, and also to see what are the variations. So real-time PCR was the great molecular machine, thanks to Carrie Mullis, who actually did this. And we are very happy that Biotechnica was able to also host a master workshop on uh, you know, QRT PCR for understanding COVID-19 in a much better way. Then this the applications of qPCR were later taken up for you know cryo electron uh, microscopy for understanding the structural component of it and this was again later deciphered using mass spec which was again a better tool for understanding these particular proteins and this was leading into antigen antibody based assays and then finally the vaccine development was being triggered and with this a new arena, the new beautiful network physiology was been developed again using bioinformatics and systems biology. So what, what did this do? This entire research put into one particular pot led into a beautiful vaccine and this is called as computational derived vaccinology. So this computational derived vaccinology paved ways for analyzing the immunogenicity or uh, immunogenicity prediction. It also helped in understanding the epitope prediction and then the antigen selection, the method how exactly the antigen has been selected and very importantly the allergy prediction could be predicted, you know, an Analyzed and the major component that is the toxicity of this particular vaccine was analyzed just using in silico platform later it was been validated using wet lab but what the point what I want to make is you know the computational derived vaccinology has played a great role in actually saving lives so what we want is are we ready for the next pandemic because we are trying to disturb nature in such a way that we never know when exactly the nature re would revolt against us so are we ready for the next pandemic are we ready to know how to manage this next pandemic now if we do not want to do this we need to do it in two better ways the first better way is preserve nature conserve nature and do not try to become god okay do not try to become creators so that you disrupt the nature the moment you disturb the nature the nature will revolt back this is point number one. The point number two is how best we can understand pathogens. And for the understanding of pathogens, the only way is to amalgamate both a dry lab and wet lab so that we are ready with the tools and techniques which can be you know, implicated to, to analyze the next coming pathogen towards us. So with this, what I want to tell you is we want all the life science students not just to study biology, but you know, using this biology, how do I apply the laws of computer science, laws of statistics, laws of mathematics, laws of physics, laws of quantum physics, so that we all together can design something uh, which is ready for the future, which could be employed for the future, so that you know next time when there is a pandemic, we will not struggle for designing a vaccine or a drug. We are ready with the vaccine or a drug. So with this, if we are able to create that workforce, and this for the creation of the workforce, we at Biotechnica, we are putting 100% of our efforts to train the budding researchers, to train the young researchers right from their bachelors to their PhDs and postdocs, so that we can create this bioinformatic revolution, so that this bioinformatics should go to everybody to the grassroots level so that our students can think in a multi-omic approach so that we are ready to face the next pandemic. With all these things, with the blessings of the Almighty, praying that there is no pandemic and we stay healthy, we stay fit and make sure we are ready with all the armors and weapons to again fight with, uh, with against the deadly pathogens. Could be a virus, could be a bacteria, could be a fungus, but on the other way, bioinformatics will still remain the same weapon to kill all these particular microorganisms. So with this particular intention, I take a leave. Thank you very much. All the very best. Stay fit. Take care.